Hey folks, Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. Welcome to part four of our How a Thermostat Works series. This is the fourth and final part of the series, and this one is a little bit more advanced. It's called, What is Cycle Rate and Why Should I Care? So I decided to make this video because this question comes up from time to time. And honestly, I don't think it comes up nearly as often as it should. And the question has to do with cycle rate. And it goes something like this. A technician is installing a new thermostat. He's doing a very good job. And he realizes that aside from simply connecting the wires and mounting it on the wall and turning the thing on, there is a setup process that has to be completed. And he realizes this and goes into the installer setup menu by practicing the secret button presses that are described in the installation instructions. And as he's scrolling through, he comes to this part that says something along the lines of cycle rate. And he has the option to select like one, three, five, six, nine, and 12 cycles. What the heck does that mean? What is it? And what should it be set for? Hey folks, I'm Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor, and I am going to explain this to you, and it is kind of a fascinating kind of a deal. If you like this kind of video and want to see more of them, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring the notification bell. Oh, and by the way, like this video. It helps a ton. So cycle rate, what in the heck is it? Well, cycle rate is a phenomenon on modern digital programmable thermostats. And it also used to exist back in the old mercury bulb style and snap contact style electromechanical thermostats. But then it was called a heat anticipator. And what the heat anticipator was, it was a little tiny heater that was embedded within the thermostat. And any time there was a demand for heat and current would flow through the W side of the thermostat circuit, it would also flow through this little adjustable resistor. And the idea was that you would take a current measurement of how much current was flowing in the W circuit, and then you would adjust the little dial to that same number. As a result, when the W circuit would be energized and the heat would be on, this little heater would be energized with a very specific amount of current and it would produce a very specific amount of heat. And the effect of that would be that it would terminate a call for heat by causing the temperature sensitive element to respond a little early because it would be responding to the heat generated by this tiny heater, the heat anticipator. And the idea was that it would turn off the burner a little bit early because after the burner shuts off, the fan would continue to operate and continue to blow warm air up through the ducts. And that by the time the fan finally shut off, the temperature would be at the set point. This was used to prevent overshooting the thermostat. So if the set point was say 70 degrees, if we turn the burner off when the temperature hits 70 degrees, well, fan is going to continue running, it's going to continue heating a little bit more, and by the time that shuts off, it might be up to 71 or 72. We have overshot the thermostat set point. So the job of the heat anticipator was to turn the, thermost the furnace off a little early and thereby prevent oversheet overshooting. Now these thermostat heat anticipators, a lot of folks never knew they were there. They came out of the box set at 0.4 which is a pretty good midpoint. They would range from 0.1 to, I think, 1.1, and anywhere in between. And 0.4 was kind of the standard middle-of-the-road setting. And the 0.4 setting was suitable for furnaces built in the 1970s and 1980s. These furnaces had a very high temperature rise. As modern furnaces began to change and as temperature rises started to come down, for example, we used to have temperature rises that would be from 70 to 100 degrees. And, and then they started coming down so that they were being more in the uh, 35 to 65 degree neighborhood. And that's where we generally have them somewhere in that neighborhood today as well. Much lower 
heat rise than in years past. So as a result, we would want to let the furnace run a little bit longer before it shuts off early. Um, these almost never got adjusted. They would be at 0.4 out of the box and they would stay there, when in reality they would probably benefit from being at a 0.8 or a 0.9 um, to give it a little extra runtime. So now enter the digital age of digital thermostats. Well, a lot of thermostat makers are still, or had been up until the last year or two, back in the 70s and 80s. And they were they're making digital thermostats for furnaces from the 70s and 80s with those high heat rises. And instead of having a heat anticipator with an adjustability on it, they would have instead what was called cycle rate. And cycle rate corresponds to cycles per hour. But it doesn't actually mean that. So, for example, the furnace would, uh, the, the thermostat would come out of the box set for six cycles per hour, which was honestly the equivalent of the old 0.4 heat anticipator setting, which hasn't been appropriate for probably 30 years. So, uh, when you are setting up your cycle rate, you are probably going to have to adjust that. And the sweet spot to get that into for modern furnaces with modern temperature rises in somewhere in the 30 to 65 degree neighborhood, and that covers a pretty wide span, is three cycles per hour, three heat cycles per hour. Now, that does not mean that the furnace is only going to run three times in an hour, nor does it mean that it will always run three times in an hour. What it means is that it shifts the algorithm in the thermostat, that the that the thermostat bases its decision-making process on. The thermostat operates off of a PID loop, proportional, integral, and derivative loop. And based on this programming, it decides when is the optimum time to turn on and when is the optimum time to turn off. The more cycles per hour you have set, the earlier it will terminate a good demand for heat. And then as a result, the sooner it has to turn back on again to um, start maintaining heat again. The fewer cycles per hour you have, the longer it will run in every run cycle. And as a result, it will take a little bit longer for it to turn on for the next cycle. The best mode of operation to have is to have the longest run cycles possible without overshooting the set point. And that is what a three cycle per hour setting will give you on both 80% AFUE and 90 plus percent AFUE gas furnaces. Um, hot tip, by the way, if you are on an older thermostat, chances are the cycle rate hasn't been set. Download the manual for that thermostat, identify how to get into the installer setup menu, find out how to shift the cycle rate from six cycles per hour to three cycles per hour, and your customers are going to be magically more comfortable than they ever have been before. You know, they're not going to know what you did, and I don't think you really need to tell them because they're just going to know, boy, ever since that technician visited our house, it has just been so much more comfortable. They're not going to experience a significant increase in energy cost. They're not going to experience anything adverse other than just feels warmer because it lets that furnace run a little bit longer before it shuts it off and gives you a more true representation of set point. If we're shutting off, if we're at six cycles per hour or if we're at nine cycles per hour, we're shutting off a little too early and not really realizing the full potential of that system. So that's what cycle rate is, and that's why you should care. So every time you're setting up a new thermostat, look to see if you have the ability to adjust the cycle rate and then go ahead and do that. Um, some other things to pay attention to as well. Um, you may have multi-stage thermostat where you have first stage heating and second stage heating. Set them both the same. Set them both at three cycles per hour. Um, in fact, depending on where you are, three cycles per hour may be better or may not be as well for you. You may want fewer than that. You may want more than that. Experiment a little bit in your own house. In my uh, neck of the woods, and I do live in a cold climate in Colorado, um, I've found that three cycles per hour is ideal for pretty much everything. Gas forced air systems around here. Also, hydronic systems. Um, boilers, three cycles per hour is where we want to set those at. Radiant heating systems, 
we might want to drop it down to two cycles per hour or one cycle per hour or even fewer because the heat rise on radiant heating systems is very, very low, right? Um, electric heat, if we're using electric resistance heat, sometimes we can have a pretty high heat rise on that. We might be at six or even nine cycles per hour on electric heat. So those are some guidelines about how and where and why to set cycle rates and uh, why it should be important to you. So every time you're setting up a new thermostat, set that cycle rate. If you're out there on a uh, maintenance visit for a customer, um, take a look and see what the cycle rate is set for. And I'll bet you'll find that you can make an improvement on it. Go ahead and do that and see what your results are. Anyway, this has been Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. Thanks for watching. And if you like this kind of video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like and make sure you hit that notification bell so that every time we upload a new video, you'll get a notification in your inbox. Oh, and by the way, go ahead and visit www.hvacservicementor.com. Find out more about some of the other training opportunities that we offer there. And while you're there, make sure you enroll and sign up on our website, um, sign up on our email list so that you'll get uh, even more information in your inbox. Every new sign up gets a free three hour training session. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. Until next time, this is Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. See you later.